What's going on, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to Our Squad, episode 77. I'm excited to stay connected to you. We have so many incredible things that are planned coming up over the next couple of weeks, and one thing that's going to remain true throughout the next couple of weeks and months and years, 2,000 years later, is that we're always bringing you our squad videos on Wednesdays. Now, today we've got something very, very, very special. We started the James devotional plan with all of our leaders and all of our students a few days ago on Monday. It's not too late to join in with us. We're reading just a few verses every day and talking about it. It's been incredible so far, but the next five weeks. We're going to be bringing you five R Squad videos all on the book of James. And so today we're getting into James chapter one. I've got my Bible right here, ready to go. The book of James. So we're going to get after it. And I thought there'd be no better way to do episode 77 on James chapter one than this right here. Let's get into it. And that is by bringing you an absolute classic video game stream today with commentary on James chapter one. And before we really get into, you know, any of that, check out my dude right there. Shout out to Yoshi. We got to talk a little bit about the book of James. James is writing a book to the church who was blowing up and spreading like crazy. The problem is they got scattered and sent all over the place. So they're scattered, but they're sent everywhere. And now James is writing to a specific group of people during this crazy time. Last thing that you nearly need to understand about this is that James, the guy writing this, is the half-brother of Jesus. The half-brother of Jesus. This is almost like Luigi. Ew. Right? I mean, it's like, you, you thought being the half-brother of Mario was hard? Try being the half-brother of Jesus. Yeah, exactly. Check this out. So, starting out strong with verse two, we're talking about faith and endurance right here. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Now, without further ado, world one, level one, the classic Mario Brothers on the original Nintendo. So, I don't know. I was just thinking about this, right? Like, I got to see this guy right here. This thing chasing after me. Okay. <laughs> Trials of any kinds. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. What's crazy to me, right, is that this mushroom <laughs> allows me to grow. Verse 4 says, so let it grow. Let your faith grow. When, you're, when, when your faith is tested, when you got to endure, when you got to push through. I feel like so many times Christians see trials, see difficult things, not as opportunities for their faith to grow, but as like, oh, oh no, that's not what God has for me. And so I got to take a step back. I got to stop instead of moving forward. But literally verse four says, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I got I to gotta jump over these trials. I got to get, get through these obstacles so I get that mushroom so that I grow. It's waiting on the other side of it. I, I just feel like we are so quick to, I don't know, blame God for trials. We're so quick to feel like anything that is hard is like not from God, you know? Uh, when literally James says like, Yo, you're gonna face trials. They're gonna be of various kinds and it's opportunity for joy. Now that doesn't mean that we see, you know, disease, that we see the virus, that we see people dying as something to celebrate. That's, that's not what it means at all. What it means is that we see that when those things happen, they bring me into a further dependence and reliance on Jesus, and for that we're grateful. That's the thing that we rejoice in. That's the thing that allows us to continue to grow and to find joy in the middle of difficult times. I got the fire here. Literally nothing can stop you when you got fire. World 1-1, one, one. it's a breeze. All right, level two. The first point tonight is that God promises growth 
during trials. God promises growth during trials. If we would be able to see trials as opportunities for us to grow, one of the ways that we're actually able to grow in the midst of trials is, is what verse 5 says. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He's not going to rebuke you for asking. That means he's not going to make fun of you for asking. He's not going to say, wow, you're so dumb. How do you not know how to handle this or do this? If you need wisdom, scripture says, ask God. He's a generous God and he will give it to you. How many times have you been in a place where you just don't know what to do? You don't know how to handle what life is throwing at you. And so maybe for you, you're trying to figure out where you're going to college, where you're going to school, what are you going to do for your job? How are you going to make money? And you're trying to figure out what the game plan is. Where are you going to go? How are you going to beat the next level of life? And how many times do I take the advice of so many friends, so many people uh, who may be looking out for my best interest, but then after I've gotten like 20 people's opinions, then I'm like, oh yeah, maybe God has something to say about this. Maybe he can give me some wisdom. I know that I've done that before. I've basically gone to God as my very last resort. But then something else I think is really important is, you know, verse six and the following verses, which talk about when we ask God, be sure that we are actually placing our trust and our faith in the answer and response that God is going to give us. I know there's been times in life where I've approached God as a last resort, but then I've also kind of approached him like, oh, well, I guess I'm just supposed to ask for wisdom because, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. But I, if I'm honest, I haven't always asked God with an expectation that he is going to provide me with wisdom. And so scripture goes on to say, people who ask God for wisdom, but don't like actually mean it or aren't actually fully trusting that he's going to provide it. God doesn't want to give wisdom to those people because he wants to give wisdom to people that put their full faith and trust in him. It says those kind of people, their loyalty is divided between God and the world and they're unstable. They're unstable in everything that they do. Uh, I th oh. Ran out of time. Well, that was unfortunate. All right. Well, it looks like I have got to redo level two because I was not very wise about how I was handling my time during that. So here we go. Speed run through level two. I'm probably honestly going to beat the entire game today. Just kidding. I really want to emphasize point number two, whoops, which is God promises wisdom during trials. So God promises growth during trials. And secondly, he also promises wisdom. Now we're moving into a new section. I skipped a few verses down to verse 19. Again, James writing to the scattered church all over the place. And it's almost as if he's kind of bringing them back to the basics of when everyone's panicking, when life is chaotic, here's some things that you can fall back on that anyone can do, no matter how old you are, no matter where you live, no matter what you look like, everyone can grow in listening and doing. So let's get in to level three and verse 19, which says this, understand this, my dear brothers, if you got to understand something, understand this. In the middle of crazy times, you need to be quick to listen, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. One of the things that makes me angry is when I die in this game. When you're angry, you're not quick to listen to anybody when you're angry. You're not listening to anybody because all you want to do is be quick to speak, basically the reverse of everything that James says that you should be doing because we're angry. I only care about myself. I'm only thinking about myself. I want you to know that I'm mad and I don't really care what you have to say. That's kind of the way that we go about it. And James is like, you know, that is not producing any type of righteousness or godly living whatsoever. So he literally says like, you got to get rid of all filth and evil in your lives. What are the things that are contributing to you not being able to listen to people? What are the things contributing to you being all about yourself and only wanting to talk? And what are the things that are contributing to quick rage and anger in your life? If it's video games, Ooh, could be that. Gotta get rid of all that stuff. And then, man, this is so hard. Humbly 
accept the word God has planted in your hearts for it has the power to save your souls. Now look, here is the deal about this. I am now on Bowser's castle. Well, the first castle. It's not like, you know, official Bowser, like baby Bowser's castle. And man, I grew up playing Mario. So I I've played this a lot. But the challenge of me playing it a lot is that sometimes I'm tempted to run through it too fast. I'm tempted. Uh, yeah, I'm tempted to go through it too quick, to not pay attention, to try to talk to you and focus on this. But then also sometimes I just run through it and I'm not really paying attention to what's going on and I can miss things or I can fall and I can die. Now, why are you saying this? I'm saying this because this is how we approach the word of God sometimes. We're in the middle of a James devotional. I've read the book of James before, and if I'm not careful, I'll be tempted to just blow right past it, to read the words, but not actually allow them to fill my heart, to not actually receive them with a humble mind and attitude. And if I don't receive them with a humble mind and attitude, they're not going to change me. I'm not really hearing the word and applying it to my life. That is what happens, excuse me, when I approach scripture, when I approach my relationship with Jesus with a sense of pride. Oh, I've heard this before, so I don't need to hear it again. No, 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 that's not how it works. Hold on, I got to focus for a second. I forget how to do this. There we go. We got him. Let's keep moving. I'm moving on to world two. Thank you, Mario. We're getting into James chapter one, verse 22. We're getting close to the end here, people. This part is crazy. We've talked about listening. Now let's talk about doing. Don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Congratulations. You plagued yourself. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. It's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and you forget what you look like. All right, well, we're going to ignore the game over that just popped up onto your screen. And I want to talk to you guys for a quick moment about what this group of verses right here actually means for us right now because i think these few verses could not be more impactful and beneficial for you wherever you're at today because i need to blow this up for a second because i, I need you guys to like really really be with me there we go listen to me for just one minute because this is so important don't just listen to god's word you must do what it says otherwise you are only fooling yourselves however long we're in the you know the social distancing kind of area Chances are you're probably gonna be spending a lot of time at home. You're gonna be on YouTube. You're gonna be consuming content through Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok. You're gonna be playing video games with your friends. You're gonna be binge watching on Hulu or Netflix, whatever it is. You're gonna be listening to so many different voices. You're gonna be listening, hearing, consuming, and spectating for so many different things. And I think that if we're not careful, that will put us in spectator mode also when it comes to the word of god so here's what i mean by that what may happen if you're not careful is that you will only ever be a spectator and a consumer of social media you'll never be a contributor of hope and compassion through social media and in the same way i don't ever want us to get into a place where we only hear and consume the word of god but never act on it the word of god has to change us if we approach it with a humble heart and humble mind we'll be able to see it hear it receive it and not just listen to it but also put it into practice in our lives